Hello, my amazing kindergarten artists. It's time to start our second quarter of art together. Now, hopefully my friends, last week, you went ahead and picked up your student materials. And so you should have both a new art folder and a paint kit as well, my friends. So those are the things that we might need soon, especially your art folder every week. The paint kit itself says that we don't need that until November 23rd, okay? Now, your paintbrush pet is in there. You can take that out. I just left that note on there so that way you knew not to open the actual paint until that week. So those cups, keep them closed so your paint does not dry up, okay? We'll use those on another day. And I also left you friends a little bit of a schedule here. If you see this piece of paper on the front of my art folder here, you see how it says second quarter art folder there? This schedule is to help you and your adults that are helping you learn best plan for your art learning, my friends, okay? So every single week for second quarter is listed with what projects we're gonna do, what art materials you're going to need every single week, and what you need to turn in either on Seesaw or Artsonia, okay? So this is a really important sheet for both my students and my families to have and keep with. Parents, if you wanna maybe set that aside and keep that yourself, you can. Otherwise, it can go right inside of the art folder to keep there as well. So, this week, my artists, we're gonna be getting to start another new art project. Our first one for second quarter. So, let's take a peek at what our new art project looks like, my friends. I have two examples right here. These two pieces of art were actually inspired by a famous artist named Piet Mondrian. We're gonna be learning a little bit more about Mr. Mondrian and his artwork. We're gonna take a look at it in a moment here. But first, we need to read our learning targets. So I have two that we need to talk about today. And I know they're a little far away. I'll bring them closer so you can see them better. Remember, I go first. Here I go. I can recognize an artist from his art. So remember, we're gonna be learning about Mr. Piet Mondrian and looking at his artwork. We're gonna take a peek at that in just a moment here. And then there's a second target as well. So let's read that one too. Here I go. I can name the three primary colors. Now the three primary colors are important. We're gonna be learning about them through this project and the next project, my friends. But they're also important because they are part of your homework this week. There's gonna be a question here in Seesaw asking you about those three primary colors and what they are. And I'm gonna talk about them here in this video. So make sure you're listening for when I say the three primary colors and what those three colors are. All right, my friends, let's go take a look at some artwork by Piet Mondrian, and then we're gonna get out what art supplies we need to start our new art project. On the screen right now, my artist, is a photo of Mr. Piet Mondrian. I wanted to show you a face to go along with a name as well as two pieces of his art that we are going to take a look at right now. Here is a first piece of art that I'd like to look at. Hmm, I don't see anything like dogs or houses. The things I do see are some different colors, lines, and shapes. This piece of artwork is called Composition 2 in red, blue, and yellow. We're going to take a peek at what we see in the artwork. For example, I see shapes like squares and rectangles. I see long and short straight lines. I even see colors besides red, yellow, and blue. I also see white and black. Now I'm going to show you one more piece of art from Mr. Mondrian, and I want you to name the colors, lines, and shapes that you see. This piece of artwork is called Board Way Boogie Woogie. Again, take a few moments to name some colors, lines, and shapes that you see in Mr. Mondrian's art. So now that we've taken a peek at Mr. Mondrian and two of his paintings, it's time to get our art supplies out, my friends. So as always, we need our art folder. And like I said, you could even look at that list to find what art materials you need. So that way, when you come to art class, you're prepared. I need my art folder, I need glue, and scissors. And as always, you can use glue bottle or glue stick, whatever is easiest for you. So I'm gonna go ahead now and open up my art folder. Like I said, you can tuck this piece of paper either inside or you can save it somewhere else. 
What we need out of our art folder today, my friends, are the first two things you'll find in your folder. The first thing you should find are some long, thin black lines, very similar to the lines we saw in Mr. Mondrian's first piece of art, and one very large square piece of paper. Those are the only things you should be getting out of your art folder for this project. So I'll go ahead and set my art folder off to the side, along with my paper clip. That way I have those for later. So we're going to be using these black lines today, my friends, not to bend them and twist them like we did in our last line project, but to create different shapes on our paper. Instead of drawing the shapes, we're going to be gluing lines to help define where our shapes might go. So you have six long pieces of black paper, my friends. I want to start with just three, though. And I want you to lay them across your paper, either going up and down or side to side, or you can even do a combination of the two. Maybe I might put mine like this. But I'm going to start with my first three, and I'm going to go ahead and glue them down. Again, you can use either glue bottle or glue stick today. I think I'll go ahead and use my glue stick, or sorry, glue bottle. I'm going to open it up, make sure I scrape off that dried bit of glue that's at the top. Give it a little gentle squeeze. Yep, it's working today. And I'm going to leave those two lines right where they are, so that way I can put glue just right on top of them. And that way I don't have to flip them over right away. I will have to flip them over once I'm done gluing. But first, I'm going to glue on this side, and I'm using nice small dots of glue. I'm squeezing very gently, and then I'm tapping my dots of glue onto my paper. Now that I've glued all the way up, I can go ahead and I can use my two hands to flip my first line over. And there's my first vertical line, my friends, because if it goes up and down, it is vertical. I'm going to do a second vertical line. Again, you don't have to do the same lines as me, my friends. If you want to turn your lines differently and make them go different ways, you can. But your lines today can only go either up and down, vertical, or side to side, horizontal. None of Mr. Mondrian's lines went diagonally. That's when it goes like this across your paper or like this. So don't make any diagonal lines because they won't reach all the way to the edge of your paper like your vertical and horizontal lines will. All right, now I'm going to put my horizontal line back on. I could put it in the middle. I could put it at the top. I think I'm going to put mine kind of close to the bottom, though. And again, I'll put my nice dots of glue, nice small dots. And again, this is something that we need to practice, my friends. If you have a glue bottle at home, doing dots of glue takes practice and time as well as patience. But I just squeeze the glue bottle very, very gently and touch it very lightly onto my paper. If you touch it too hard, your glue bottle will close up. All right, putting that one down and I'm smoothing from the middle out. I'm now gonna hold down my lines and count to 10 in places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Because I have three lines, I should probably find at least three points where I hold it and count. All right, we have three more lines left. And as always, my artists, if you need to pause the video here and catch up to me, you can. But if you're ready to do some more lines, these next three lines, my friends, we're not gonna just glue them down nice and long because Mr. Mondrian also had some lines that were short. So maybe I might wanna put a line that touches this one and goes off the edge of my paper, which means I would need to cut it there. Now. I always recommend my artists gluing a line first and cutting it second. That way I know exactly where I'm going to cut it. Because if I cut it right away, I might not get it quite right. So I'm going to flip it over and glue it down first. And then I'll be able to pick up my whole white paper and cut that black line right on the very, very edge, just like this. Now, I have this little bit left over as well. Should I throw it away? Nope, I'm gonna use it somewhere, my friends. Maybe I might even put it right there. Maybe I could put it over here. I can put it anywhere that it touches either an edge, a black line, or two black lines. So for example, if I put it here, hmm, would that work? Not quite, because it doesn't touch either a black line, another black line, or an edge. So I'd have to move it somewhere else. Maybe I could put it here. <gasps> that works, I could put it there. So I'll go ahead once again, use my dots of glue or my glue stick, and I'll glue down this little bit as well. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing for my last two long lines as well. I'm going to find fun different places where I can place them and cut them. Maybe then I'll put one here and I'll cut that off there and maybe I'll also put this one here and cut it off there but I'm gonna speed mine up just a little bit right now and show you how it should look when I'm all finished gluing down my lines my friends okay so again if you need to pause the video here and do some of your own gluing and cutting you can but I'm gonna speed this part up for me okay So here is what it can look like when you are finished gluing down all of your different lines, my friends. And you'll know that you're done when you only have little tiny bits of black left that you can't use. Because obviously these tiny little pieces couldn't fit between two black lines or a black line and an edge. And by making all these different vertical and horizontal lines, I've created many different shapes, whether it's cute little squares or big rectangles just like how Mr. Piet Mondrian made his different shapes in his artwork that we looked at. Now this artwork needs to dry that way next class we can add our primary colors of red, yellow, and blue just like Mr. Mondrian did on his first example that we looked at. Remember that was composition two in red, blue, and yellow. Again, those are your answers, my friends, for what are the three primary colors your question in Seesaw this week. So when you get a chance and you're all cleaned up and you have your artwork sitting out to dry, don't put it back in your folder because it'll get stuck. Then you can go into Seesaw and answer that template by either recording your voice to tell me those three colors or using some fun shapes with those three colors, or you could even write the words or color those three colors onto that template. Whatever you want to do, my friends. No picture is needed this week. Again, your artwork could look like this, or it could also look like one of these does as well, my friends. There's no wrong or right way to do this project. As long as you use your long and short straight lines, again, to make vertical and horizontal lines, okay? All right, my artists, I hope you have an awesome time finishing up your art project. Don't forget to answer that question in Seesaw about our primary colors again. And I will see you friends next time. As always, have fun creating.